I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're talking with author Frank Weber about his amazing book, a mesmerizing book called Until Next Time. It transports readers to the heart of a mountain community where ordinary meets extraordinary. As a protagonist, an old man finds himself accompanied by a silent, ghostly visitor. He gains a newfound understanding of the secrets hidden within the landscape. The author's captivating narrative demonstrates the power of resilience and the profound connection between human beings and nature. We are delighted to have Frank in the spotlight today. We thank the folks at Atticus Publishing for helping us put him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like him by subscribing to our channel. Frank, thanks so much for being our guest today. Thank you for having me. Loved your book until next time. Let's start out with the big picture. Tell folks what it's all about. Well, it's a it's a basic simple story, uh, part coming of age, part ghost of the mountain. Um, there's a boy that doesn't really want to be a part of anything. His he had some family troubles, and uh, his father takes him up to the mountains to visit a friend of his that lives there. An old man lives by himself up on the side of the hill. Uh, they tell stories through the night and they come to find out that the stories actually are true bit by bit. They learn more and more about the mountain and things begin to blur a little bit where you're not really sure where the ghosts of the mountain actually come in. Right. The, uh, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Now the, the one thing uh, that, that is peculiar about the whole story is everyone that's read it for me so far has had a different interpretation of the last chapter about how the story ends. Right. And for me, that was a great end to the story. I had my own idea about it, but people can read it and come up with something completely different for me, all the better. Exactly, exactly. Leaving it kind of open-ended where your reader is becoming an active participant in the storytelling, I think is a goal of many writers. And uh, so you've accomplished that here. What made you decide to write about the mountains? Well, I, I have a long-standing love of the mountains, uh, outdoors, and just the woods in, woods in general. Uh, I used to go, younger days, used to go into the mountains. If things got bad, I, I call it bedroll camping. Mm -hmm. Throw a, a blanket on my back, knife, gun, bottle, head into the woods in the mountains where no one could find me. Right. So I've always drawn on that. I've always... I had some really weird and spectacular stories come out of every trip into the mountains. So mm -hmm. it was, that's kind of a no brainer for me. I always write somehow it ties into the woods, the outdoors and the mountains. Very cool. So that's where your inspiration came from one of your uh, bed pack uh, camping trips. Oh yeah. Yeah. In part uh, the story itself had actually hit me out of completely out of left field one Sunday afternoon watching uh, documentaries on TV. And uh, I thought, boy, why does everything in the woods, why is everything people run into, or why are they afraid of it? Why do they think it's a, it's out to get them? And just like that, the whole story came to me. And within about two weeks, I had the whole thing written. Very cool. Very cool. I find something a little scarier about being alone in the mountains or the woods than being in a big city, even though there's more, uh, you know, registered killers in the big city when you're all alone out there you know it's you and whoever you encounter i mean like i think you said at the beginning of your story that you usually bring a knife and a gun with you right oh yeah absolutely yeah don't go into the don't go to the mountains without it yeah don't leave home without it <laughs> as they say because you don't know you run into an ex, uh, an escaped con in there you know or whatever you know you're People... and like you said your imagination kind of runs wild when you're there in the mountains, the people never worried me. You can spot them coming. You can tell they're coming. It's uh, when you go up into the mountains and the even the even the the hardwoods. We got bears and coyotes. Depending on how far up you get, a, a mountain lion even not something you want to run into, and you don't want them finding you in the middle of the night. Exactly. Exactly. I worry more about the animals than I ever did people. Right. Right. Yeah, well, you must have more animals out where you are. We <laughs> we uh, often are, you know, in the Catskills and often in uh, Acadia. Uh, and there's not too many 
bears and and mountain lions there, as far as I know anyway. But uh, it is a very enchanting place, the mountains, that's for sure. Now, you've got an interesting background. Your website is on the screen. It's frankietats.com. Love the nickname. Uh, where, where, how did you earn that? Where did you earn that? Who's been calling you that for how long? That I stumbled into that nickname uh, several years ago. I was doing uh, alternative modeling. And mm-hmm. I'm covered with tattoos. Yeah. And at the end of a shoot, a lot of the guys were going around. It was a gangster shoot, a 40s theme. They were going around the room giving themselves nicknames. And they, I was just, I kept to myself, but they got to me and they just looked at me as Frankie Tats. <laughs> and it just kind of stuck. Uh, great. Uh, it's a great nickname. You expect a guy with a name like Frankie T- Tats to be talking like, you know, my name is Frankie Tats. <laughs> if you don't like my book, I'm going to whack you. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you don't talk like that. You talk more like an author, which is great. Was this your first book? This actually is the second that I've had published. The first one was self-published, but it was the result of a uh, a charity effort for Epilepsy Foundation. A few authors got together and put in stories, and that did remarkably well for the charity. So once everything was done and they cut the cut everything loose, I published it myself to, to have the story out there. That's called The Mist of My Dreams. I'm sorry, one more time, what's it called? It's called The Mist of My Dreams. The Mist of My Dreams. Okay, great. And is that a short story? It's closer to a short story. Yeah. It's, like it's a novella. not nearly as long as this. It's It was meant to be a part of an anthology. Gotcha. Gotcha. Sounds good. So that got uh, whetted your appetite a little bit for writing. You got the bug a little bit. And uh, when did you start writing this book? I said, you said you wrote it in about two weeks, but when did you start writing? This one, uh, almost two years ago now. Hmm. Uh, process takes a while to move through all the gears. Yeah, absolutely. Did you have to rewrite it? Was rewriting part of your process? Only minor tweaks here and there. Uh, the story came to me and I couldn't type it in fast enough. Awesome. I think that's the best work when it feels really inspired, like the words are just flowing out of you and you can't wait to get the next sentence down on paper. Have you envisioned this as a TV series or a movie at all? I've actually, lately, I've been thinking just how well this simple story could equate into, uh, I think, more of a movie. Mm. Uh, I uh, I think a lot could be drawn out of it. I've got the framework here. Yeah, but a lot could be drawn out of it into a, a full length story. Absolutely, It'd be very visual as well. You know, you could get a perfect oh, yeah. mountainscape where uh, you know the story unfolds, and maybe an older, established actor like uh, Clint Eastwood playing the old man. That would be a dream come true, huh? Oh yeah, it would. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Are you working on any other books right now? I have. Uh, I actually, I'm working on a sequel for this one. Okay. Uh, I got a few more thoughts came to me. I haven't put them all together yet. I have more notes than anything. Um, I have a couple of novels that are completed and a few novellas also completed. Great. I'm more working now in the short stories. I, I enjoy that process a lot more. I tell a whole story in a smaller ball. Mm. It, it seems to be working well for me. So are you thinking about putting those short stories into like an anthology of short stories, a collection? In in time, possibly. Yeah. Uh, I'm sending I'm sending them out for review as much as I'm able, as much as I can find places I think they might fit. Mm. I've had a couple short stories published. So it's uh, the, the ball stuff definitely started rolling. That's wonderful. Wonderful. Who was your first reader for Until Next Time? Who did you give the book to and say, what do you think of this? My youngest daughter, okay. she uh, she unfortunately wasn't able to finish the entire thing, so she doesn't know the ending, <laughs> uh, but uh, she she loved it all the way up until about two thirds of it. Okay. And how old is she? She's, um, <laughs> and I'm going blank, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no trick questions here. You can um, give us an approximate. 15 now. 15. Gotcha. So she was like 13 then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Good. Sounds great. So 
your your uh, work right now is on the short story. It's in, you, you said you're distributing them. How are you distributing them? How can people read some of your short stories? The ones that are published, I, I have links on them or links to them on my site, frankytats.com. Mm -hmm. uh, the other ones, whenever they, they're not out for, they're not out in public domain. Gotcha. I have to get them published first. But right now they're all out as much as I could put out. Several of them are under review. Some of them, several of them are just received and ready to review. Sounds great. Sounds great. And um, where do you see your career going next? Do you want to get into writing full time or are you writing full time? Right now, it's, that's, that's what I am doing. Um, right. I had resigned my position as a manager of labor relations after 20 years, mm -hmm. just before the shutdown. And uh, unfortunately, about the same time, both my legs went into a catastrophic state. And right now I'm recovering from a double hip replacement. Good God. One leg in February, one leg in March. I'm doing doing good, recovering great. Good, once again. Good. But all of that just kind of pushed me in this direction. Right. Because I right. can always sit with my notebook and write. And I can always sit at the laptop and write. Yeah. So yeah. in the meantime, I'm, I would love for it to be a full-time profession. Right. Time. Exactly. That's, that's what but I do. I'm sure it's been good therapy for you writing too, to kind of get you out of your, I mean, I'm sure a little funk is uh, attached with going through some surgeries. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. And the recovery gave process. Me a few, gave me a few uh, short stories as well. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Well, the name of the book is called until next time. It is an extraordinary tale that will transport you to the heart of a mountain where the ordinary meets the extraordinary. You'll hear some tales told. You'll be wondering if they're true or not. Some may be, some might be, some maybe aren't. It's up for you to decide. It is a great book. It is written by Frank Weber. You can find out more on his website, frankytats.com. You can also catch up on all of his work and all of his writings there as well. Frank, thanks so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you so much for having me. All oh, the pleasure is all mine. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time, I'm Spotlight.